we're rapidly moving to a world in which I believe that self-driving fleets powered by electricity will be the dominant way that we get from point A to point B. What are the implications to our justice system? What will we want the rules of the road to be when we arrive on the other side? We need to start thinking about some of these issues and planning for them now because rules take a long time to be written, and this transition might be happening faster than we think. Let's explore some of these rules of the road. Now, the first exciting thing is that there will be near zero driving under the influence accidents. Now, it won't be for lack of trying. Look at this guy caught on surveillance cameras in China. He has a self-driving car, and to celebrate the close of a big business deal, he decided he was going to surf his car. In other words, he was going to stand on the roof of his car and just let the car drive down the street. As you can imagine, China was not amused. Now, if we're going to have dramatically fewer accidents that are caused by human drivers, one of the strange consequences is that we're going to need to figure out a new source of supply for organs. Since 1999, the waiting list for organs has doubled from about 65,000 people to 123,000 people. So we have a great need for new organs. Currently, about one in five organ donations come from victims of vehicular accidents. And so 20% of the supply will vanish as we switch to self-driving car fleets, which is awesome for the people in the cars, but we'll need to figure out a new source of supply for these organs. Now, the good news is we have a bio fund. And so we're looking forward to finding the company that can generate new organs as we need them. It turns out that a huge part of the judicial system basically deals with traffic accidents. About a third of all civil trials, 20% of all tort trials have to do with motor vehicles. So if you think about the big ecosystem around this, so there's a long list of people who are involved with working in this corner of the judicial system who will get to find more interesting jobs, personal accident attorneys, judges, bail bondsmen, car bonding hunters, speed limit sign makers, uh, traffic enforcers running DUI stops. So there's going to be a lot of people who, because these accidents will drop to new zero, will get to apply their talents in other areas. One of the areas an enterprising lawyer might want to get involved in is actually writing the new rules of the road. So for example, in California, there is now a rule that says if you are testing one of your autonomous vehicles, we want a report at the end of the year that tells us about all of the things that you learned. And one of the metrics that they've created is disengagements. It's a bureaucratic term that basically means I want to know every time the self-driving car didn't know what to do and had to disengage. So that's an example of a rule that is a new rule of the road. Lawmakers in Australia are already hard at work on literally writing the book on rules that we'll use once self-driving cars are on the road. And of course, the big question everybody wants to understand is who owns the liability? What happens when a self-driving car causes an accident? Who's liable? The car maker, the fleet operator, the person sitting inside the car, the software provider. There will be a long set of precedents to be set. We're going to have to rewrite our existing rules once there are algorithms driving our cars as opposed to people. Here's another interesting quirk on the judicial system, which is if every car is a set of sensors, we're going to have for the first time sensors everywhere. So if a crime happens in a public space where a car happens to be driving by it, or even better, multiple cars, we're going to be able to reconstruct who was there, what were they doing, in the type of accuracy that we could only dream of in our current world. So having sensors everywhere means that we're going to have new witnesses that we can call to try to figure out who did what to whom. Not only will we be able to have very reliable witnesses at our trials, we'll also be able to collect this great data set that will allow city managers to figure out where are the potholes that need to be filled, where are the signs wearing out, where are the landmarkers wearing out. We'll also create new types of jobs. We'll need people to figure out how to archive all of this data, how to handle requests for this data, and how to share this data with the appropriate authorities. Another consequence of self-driving electric cars is that we can say goodbye to our driver's licenses. Nobody will need a license to drive because nobody's driving. I think this is great for another reason, which is we've somehow overloaded our driver's licenses as a form of identification, and we can get to work on more secure, hopefully biometrically based forms of identification that we can use at airports and other settings. I'm sure nobody's going to shed a tear when we shut down all the DMVs, which seems a likely consequence of the move to self-driving. We don't need driver's licenses. We don't need to register our cars because we don't own them. 
Therefore, we don't need to stand in lines. Yay. Here's something you weren't probably thinking about until just this moment. We're going to need a new meme to put into our movies to replace the car chases because there will be no car chases. The self-driving cars will be programmed to be safe and you won't be able to hop into a car and create mayhem on the streets. And so we'll need to think of another way to generate the tension and excitement of a car chase. So movie directors, you can start thinking about what replaces car chases in your movies. Now, if you need a speedy getaway from a location, and not that I'm endorsing this, we have a portfolio company for you. Just hop on a line bike as someone has already been dreaming about this exact scenario. I had a dream that I was being chased and I got away on a line bike. Bike shares are a success.